a Meek Robertson uh, to the Detroit Lions. A lot of people talking about like him missing 25% of his games too. A lot of those were inactives from like the first two years. And then he had like a hip injury. But that's he's a fourth round pick. I mean, you guys have if you have high hopes for uh, if you have high hopes for um, Brock Martin, I don't know, but yeah. he's seen a similar situation where a lot, a lot of inactives too, right? So it's like maybe a developmental thing. But the past two years, dude is a dog. Yes. All right, I, I, Amik Robertson. We kind of got into it a little bit before the show started, but um, I th- he's very versatile, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Like he, he can play that slot. He can play outside. But just like the for like he's just, he's just, he's feisty, man. He's really really feisty. I don't want to say that he's fast, but he's certainly quick. Yeah. He's got that, that quick twitch ability. And I, I put it on our uh, our extra page. The, the route against, I think it was uh, Rice. It was she Rice, yeah, yeah. We put him on the ground. One hand, yeah, I told him he's too small. Mm-hmm. That's coming from the, the guy that was 5'8", 180 pounds, though. Yeah, like, he, he brings that oomph that a lot of people like want to credit CJGJ with. Yeah, this is, like I said, and there's your – he's he's not going to be a starter for you if all things go right. That is your guy that is your Jerry Jacobs guy. That is a guy that you could put out there some depth piece, and you signed him as a depth piece. So I, I love that, honestly. I thought it was a good signing. He's a guy – He'll get in your face. This is a Dan Campbell, Aaron Glenn fucking guy. He's physical. He's aggressive. He talks shit. And in college, he was a, he was a dog. He's a ball hawk. So he can get his hands on the football. I, I'm I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. It's not like you brought him in here to be your starting cornerback. You brought him in here as a deputy. I'm telling you what, though. He's going to compete. He's going to compete with somebody out there. I just I, I, I don't see a scenario where he doesn't. Uh, this, this kid is he's feisty. He started games for the Raiders last year. I think going into like I read it somewhere in 22, he was the only guy on the roster that got interceptions, had led the team in pass deflections, and that was after he was inserted as a starter because of injury. Mm-hmm. Last year, jumping out to the outside cornerback and still like producing that, dude's a dog. Yeah. Speaking of dogs, Al, I, I don't know if you're ready. I was going to wait to the break for this one, but I appreciate you stopping by. This guy, you're a lunatic. No, no, it's an addiction. You it's are a weirdo. Hobby, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am a psychopath. I think you called me a football nerd, and I appreciated that. Yeah, man, you post a lot of informative stuff about the Detroit Lions, uh, past, present, um, stuff that I use. I've been using for the show as of recently, too, and I, I respect the hustle. And I, I wanted to give you a voice because, obviously, you're well-informed what's going on with the Detroit Lions, and I appreciate you stopping by. Meek Robertson, just, just real quick takeaways from that My guy from the man. 2020 draft. Like, I wanted him end of day three back then, even if we were going to pair him with what ended up being Jeff Okuda. Like, what a freak of nature athlete. The fact that he's getting those TFLs, he's getting interceptions. And then you add in the background where he grew up with a bunch of his siblings, single mother, dad was in jail. And then you add to the fact that he became a father sophomore year of high school. 15 years then old. And he had a knee Damn. injury before senior year of high school. And what did he do? He turned around. He was uh, a freshman All-American. Like, he gets he gets his hands on the ball. He is a, he is a ball magnet for all five, eight of him. But, yeah, I'm a big fan of Meek because, I mean, what's he going to do for us, guys? He is going to be our Jerry Jacobs and Will Harris combined one roster yes. spot, but an upgrade. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, does that not feel good that hopefully um, after the draft – maybe a top 61 pick we're going to do a a wide cornerback an outside corner to eventually develop we'll let brad holmes yes. pick his guy hopefully but i just really needed to add to the depth and then just move emmanuel mosley because i don't want to rely on him mm-hmm. now yes. on the depth chart yeah so i think that's just a, a really good pick that he can back back up brian branch he's got that familiarity it makes us versatile i mean it makes aaron glenn better it makes everyone on the team better a hundred percent agree I, I, I talked about it while you're walking in, like the the oomph that a lot of people like to give uh, CJ DJ credit for. I and mean, what she did bring it a little bit. I feel like this guy just brings it in, like his play alone, without like some of the extracurriculars. You know what I'm saying? And like, I, I think just even in camp, I don't think he's gonna start over anybody. Uh, not not like day one or anything like that. But he's gonna he's gonna test him. He's you know gonna push. He's, he's, he's gonna he's fire got some the dog. He's got the dog in him, and he's not gonna get, he's gonna push these guys to be better because they know. You got a guy nipping at your heels that when he gets out there, he produces. So He's got the Jerry Jacobs dog in him, yeah. but he's a little more skilled. Like, he has ball yes. skills, and he he has a little more football awareness. Especially, I mean, most of his plays on the ball are in zone when he's able to turn his back and uh, you know to the back of the field yeah. and have his eyes on the quarterback. But he can also lock up, similar to Carlton Davis. We're building something here. I, I see there yes. is a, a mind meld between Brad Holmes and Aaron Glenn, and now Deshae Townsend. 
Yeah. Our, our new defensive backs coach, passing game coordinator, I, I, I trust them. I, major upgrades, and we're raising the floor of our defense. Yes. yes. And I, I forgot to put it out there on, on Twitter. I, I know he writes for, uh, for The Athletic. Um, Nick, I think his name. Either way. Baumgartner? He, yes. He said that Aaron Glenn got a great value version of Aaron Glenn. And that's, that's kind of like what he is. That was my first thought. Yeah. Going into free agency, I'm like, I mean, there's – very few cornerbacks under 5'9 that can play outside. Darius yeah. Williams was one of them. Yep. Um, who maybe was a target, but. Yep. A little bit older, though, too. Yeah, right? exactly. Not we as got, quick. God, I love it. I just, ah, I mean, I, it was a good point that we got a version of Aaron Glenn. Feisty. He's always around the ball. He's He knows how to tackle. I'm, I, listen, man, I'm excited. Well, how are you feeling about Carlton Davis? This has been like a polarizing topic here. I don't know why. I love I, it. I like the way you're describing the break. Not only we were fawning, we were getting some broad shoulder, big bone, burly boy hugs. Yes, exactly. so, like, I'm glad they didn't show that. But, I took uh, my shoes off. I, I, <laughs> I, I appreciate off. you guys for letting me tamper with you. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Carlton Davis' length and physicality, I think, is clearly what Brad Holmes and Aaron Glenn were drawn to. I think that's the biggest thing with Carlton Davis the third is this feels like there was the mind meld there where this maybe was more Brad Holmes in addition to Aaron Glenn, when we look at last offseason and we take Sutton and Emmanuel Mosley, Aaron Glenn has that deep history from the Nike outing with those two. You have to think that he was saying, these are my corners. This feels a little more like a taste of, of Brad Holmes getting his guy in here. Mm -hmm. A lengthy 6'1 physical, physical line of scrimmage, and, and hopefully we'll have him tackling a little bit better. But it feels good to not not have to back up the beer rings truck and give yes. away those draft. I mean, Brad Holmes comes from the college scouting department. Yeah. yeah. Where is he been? When, why are we in the NFC championship game? Cause the because the damn picks he's made in yep. addition to everything Dan Campbell and staff. Yeah. And what do you but, think about people comparing him to Cam Sutton? Like it nah, just dude, that's driving me can't crazy. be more false. I do understand it because Sutton did play a lot of the, the cover to the Blitzburg Mm -hmm. uh, zone coverage uh, with the Steelers before he got here. So he wasn't just a man guy. Yeah. And they're lengthy guys. But I do think uh, Carlton Davis offers a little more as far as locking guys up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's not getting lost in space with those guys as much because he's a little bit closer, a little less separation. And, um, I mean, he's, he's younger than when we than we brought Sutton. Sutton was 28 last year. He's yeah. a year younger. Yeah. And, I mean, he comes from one program. He comes from Todd Bowles. He's going to be well coached. Um, he comes from a good organization. I'm, I'm excited for him. And I, I think the fact that we didn't give up a first-round pick, I'm enthused by. I was not rooting for that. Yeah. Just given the volatility of cornerback. Yeah. If you look at guys like J.C. Jackson, William Jackson the third, going back to Namdi Asmoa. I mean, yeah. Trey Waynes, Byron Jones, Especially the switching Dolphins. schemes like that, too. Mm -hmm. Switching schemes is the biggest thing. You don't yeah. know – if it's going to be consistent already cornerback play is not consistent consistent so if we had expended that kind of pick on on sneed um who actually speaking of sneed do you guys know how many everyone's heard the stat how many penalties he had last 17 year? 15, right something like that. 18 about 18. one a game yeah so you guys why don't you guess how many from 2021 20, to 2023 how many penalties did carlton davis the third have 17. he had 17 okay yeah. there we go is that not a difference maker. Difference, mm -hmm. it is. And, and think about, let's be honest, was Snead maybe getting some of those Kansas City calls? Was he getting a little Absolutely. more leeway? I, I yeah. pointed that, yes. Okay. That was something I was pointing out, too. Because like, I was watching the tape. One night, I couldn't sleep. I was literally up to like 3 in the morning watching the I heard the you were watching tape plugged in right after the show yesterday. Right? Yes, and I was like, uh, well, was, I was watching Snead this night, though, and I was like, he ain't getting away with that in Honolulu Blue. Those refs are throwing yellow all day if that happens. Like, that's just – I know how it is over here. We, we It's Detroit versus everybody. It's after refs for as long as I've been a fan, right? And I just knew Sneed was – I don't know. I was really comfortable with, like, that. On top of, like you said, giving away what may possibly could have been that, that pick 29. I, they heard day two picks, too, as well. But, like – and then resetting the market, too, or at least getting close to resetting the market. I just was never comfortable with it. And, obviously, I think some Brad was never comfortable with it. He kind of was vocal about it, too. I – it was blowing my mind that people think that was going to happen. But, yeah, I'm all in on Carlton Davis. And this is a guy who the Lions played twice this year. And he played pretty damn well against the <laughs> Lions twice this year. You think mm -hmm. that played – like, that's in the back of their minds, right, when they're looking at guys like, oh, I remember what he did to us both times we went up against the Bucks this year. And do you look at that – did Ben Johnson have any thought in that? Because mm -hmm. our game plan seemed to dictate we were picking on 
Jamel Dean a little bit, but Christian is on their nickelback. Yeah. And then Zion McCollum, when he got some reps, we immediately attacked him, right? Yeah. Yep. Who's Ben Johnson telling you he's the best cornerback? We're not attacking him as much. Mm -hmm. On third downs, guess who's coming over to guard Amon Ra? Yeah. Guess who's coming over to guard Sam Laporta? Yeah. <laughs> it was Carlton Davis. <laughs> it, it, the head coach, who's a phenomenal defense coordinator, a former DB himself, and Todd Bowles is like, hey, I want you on their best guy. Mm -hmm. It's that, That's what he is. People need to re recognize that. And that's there's value in that. On top of Brad Holmes having some faith in him and his evaluation of guys, too. Uh, speaking of evaluations of, of, of guys, pause the way we started this segment. That's not a good one to go to. But uh, the rest is free agency class, man. Uh, more specifically, defensive line. That's where Spinney and I kind of waiting for Brad Holmes to take a chunk out of. Where, where, what guys are you thinking are going to fall here or, like, at least in Brad Holmes' wheelhouse in terms of, like, contracts and whatnot? We're starting to slip away from some of the higher-level guys who are maybe going to be day one start, you know, day one starters. Everyone saw the DJ Reader report, his agents having a great day yesterday, getting everybody interested. But I, I do think we still need to bring in someone, whether it's a Neville Gallimore, just to rotate in a, I mean, I want Sheldon Rankins. He's still number one on me. I think he is a, he's got gunpowder in his hands, man. He's got a lot of shock and he has a history with Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn in New Orleans. Um, Sebastian Joseph Day, is a little more under the radar, wouldn't have as much impact, but Brad Holmes drafted him. Yeah. So him. Um, Who's that first guy you said? I'm not, I'm not familiar. Neville Gallimore. Yeah. He was same draft class as Justin Matabuke and Justin Elliott. The defense tackles from four years ago. He's a backup for the Cowboys who at times flashed, but other times he was pretty inconsistent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Don't then uh, I think is Tugboat Hankins still around? I think he is, yeah. Okay, he's another guy. I really would like to solidify a nose tackle that can troll the pivot. That's what we were just and, saying. And then groom our boy Ricky Martin, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and Nick got to meet him. He said he looked just like Ricky Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have lookalikes for you guys. For us? For us? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we already know. Who are they? Jonah, Jonah Jackson, Graham Glasgow. No, no, I think it's even better. But now, I, I mean, I got TJ Lang to me. Yes. I got, oh, shit. You look like Ryan Wendell, Jonah Jackson's new offensive line coach. Okay. And you look like Jermaine uh, Alamanur, the new Giants right tackle. Not familiar. Well, I actually have actually gotten Darnell Wright, too. You are, you are a nerd. Who knows the, head, the offensive line coach of these they, teams? <laughs> well, he replaced, I'm not going to get into it, but he re replaced Aaron Cromer. And it was something that McVay brought in coaches from the outside last year, and that was part of the reason for their success. Okay. So you're 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 deep in this. I'm plugged in. I've got a sickness. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. So, I, so how do you feel about Ben Johnson and his departure, or if if, if it doesn't what happen? departure? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be saying that. Yeah. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess are, are you comfortable? Were you comfortable with that situation like before he came back? Uh, I wouldn't call me, I would say uncomfy if yeah. he had left, but I do believe with Dan Campbell as our head coach, I think he has a hand in some of the play design, some of the schematics, and he helped groove Ben Johnson in when he took over. Um, and Tanner Engstrom, it's just like, it sounds like we've got a good, uh, young future offense coordinator, possibly in Tanner Engstrom, uh, and the running back coach, with Scotty Mitch. Scotty Montgomery? Yes. And then, yeah, we've got a good brain trust in the offensive coaches. So I think we would have made a work, but I'm, I'm enthused that Ben Johnson's back. Come on, we're all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. That doesn't happen it, two years in a row. And is, is Daniil Hunter, is that a pipe dream? It's, I mean, we're, I'm we're not, looking at it. I'm not considering He's asking him. for $30 million a year. At, at 20, and I know he came into the league when he was, like, damn near 18. Yeah. Off yeah. his, like, four and a half career sacks at LSU. But, no, I, we can't afford that. No. Yeah, I agree. Although it'd be a fun pipe. I mean, it's a fun pipe dream, but we have to think about Hutch. all the can contracts yeah. down the line. Um, have you done homework on Marcus Davenport? Yeah, I uh, went home last night and I watched a 2022 game against uh, him against the Bengals. And then uh, Vic, the one of the one games he played like 40 plus snaps last year for the Vikings against the uh, Chiefs. And uh, on box score, uh, the Bengals game. He only had, like, one QB pressure, one QB hit. But he was active, and he had jetpack in him. And he was, he was beating Jonah Williams, the left tackle, a couple times, forcing um, Burrow to scramble. And he's, he'll thud a puller. He can dominate. I mean, he's got the length. Yeah. He's jacked up. He can dominate a tight end. Uh, then I turned on the, the second game, 
and it was like he was 80% of himself. You know, he was a little slower, a little less burst juice um, for the Vikings last year, and hopefully he wasn't 100%, mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe, you know, taking most of the year off with that ankle injury, he can provide a little bit more, but I am not banking on him being someone um, we rely on. It'll be a nice to have. Like, I still think we're going to have to draft an edge within one of the first three picks yeah, yeah. And, gr and groom him to be part of our D-line foundation. I mean, I mean, what, what was your guys' reaction to it? I So, it's, in the limited it, time he played, he was, like, super productive. Like, it was crazy. Like, he was still getting, like, the sacks. I didn't look at any of the pressure numbers, but, like, the stat, the sacks in itself, I thought that was crazy. And then the little bit of tape I did watch, dude, that's strong as shit. Like, you, how you talk about taking on polars? I was like, holy shit. Like, he's just like a pure, like... Uh, Jetpack, I guess, is the word you put. I, I like that. I like that. Yeah. He has really strong hands, too. Um, stacking guys up and shedding the blocks is what I've seen. But I, I just watched a, a plays. I didn't watch, like, an entire game. But it's my question or my concern is, like, the health, you know. And Brad Holmes just has this obsession with, like, if, injured <laughs> dudes. It's, yeah. it's weird. He finds value in guys with injury red flags, right? But. DJ Reader, bring him home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the quad, man. Yeah, I would love it. We just had a, we had a Dr. Jeff Pierce on BDE today, and he talked about how the quad, like for a big guy like that, is not really that much trouble to come back from, unless okay. unless it was like a super intense tear, then it could be yeah. some time. But if it wasn't anything too crazy, he should be back and ready to go. Yeah, all right. I love to hear. I mean, would he not be perfect next to a lean and perfect? And he can those collapse guys. the pocket on sec on long passing downs, third downs. Yeah, yeah. He was instrumental for Trey Hendrickson to get 17 and a half sacks. Exactly, because, like, and for Logan Wilson yes. and and Jermaine Pratt to get his extension. Like, he really was a linchpin of that Luana Rumo defense. Yeah, if, if you're taking double teams every play, like guys around you are going to get better immediately. So that's why I want, I want that big heavy in the middle.